This story happened to me a couple years ago. It happened on a Saturday night. I was typing out a school report for my English class and was pretty worn out from the tedious amount of thinking that transpired throughout the paper. I decided to take a break and procrastinate a little bit, maybe watch a couple of YouTube videos. I needed to take some stress off my mind, but didn't really have anyone to vent or talk to. This gave me the idea to visit a chat room called Omegle. For those of you who don't know what Omegle is, it's a chat room where you can literally video chat with random strangers online through your computer webcam. Needless to say, Omegle definitely helped with my social skills growing up as a child, so I was always active on it. I remember this one particular night. I was having trouble meeting new people. This left me a little frustrated to say the least, but that's the kind of thing to expect when you're on these kind of chat sites. That's when I stumbled upon this one guy. He looked to be around the same age group as myself and seemed like a pretty harmless individual. I decided to say hi. He didn't say anything back, he just typed the word hi in the chat box. I found it kind of weird that he would go through the effort of typing out hi as opposed to just saying hi verbally. He then waved at me and began typing something else. He introduced himself in the chat box saying, My name is Daniel, what's your name? I verbally said, my name is James, how are you? He then stares at the camera and doesn't say a word to me, completely dismissing the fact that I just asked him a question. At this point, I was convinced that this had to be some sort of pre-recorded video and that someone was just trolling me. That's when he began typing in the chat box again saying, I'm deaf, please type in the chat box unless you know sign language. I honestly felt stupid and immediately typed, no worries, my name is James, and gave a quick thumbs up as an act of kind gesture. He immediately typed back saying, nice to meet you, James, and gave me a thumbs up as well. He then typed something else that left me dumbfounded. He said, I will use my whiteboard to chat with you going forward because my hands will be occupied. I was confused by what he meant by that, so I typed, what do you mean by your hands being occupied? He then starts writing on a whiteboard and raises it up on the screen, which read, want to play a game? I typed, sure, what game you want to play? What he did next is something I will never forget to this day. He held a revolver up with one hand and the whiteboard up with the other hand saying, let's play Russian roulette. I was honestly quite creeped out by this guy and was contemplating on clicking the stop option to skip this weirdo. That's when he wrote in another message on the whiteboard saying, one of six. I was confused by what one of six meant. He then took the revolver, slipped one bullet inside the cylinder, and began spinning it with his other hand. I now knew what he meant by one of six. It seemed like the guy was about to demonstrate an act of Russian roulette with one bullet in the cylinder of six. He then puts the revolver against his head. I began typing. What are you doing? Please stop this. The guy then smiles disturbingly on the camera and pulls the trigger. Nothing happened. He starts laughing hysterically like a psycho. I was honestly disturbed, but also skeptical that the gun was real, so I typed, Is that even real? He then points the revolver at the wall and begins to repeatedly press the trigger until the shot was fired. I was completely blown away by what I was seeing and typed, Dude, you could have died! That's when the guy raised the whiteboard to the screen again, showing the message, five of six. I frantically started typing, don't do it, repeatedly in the chat box, desperately trying to get his attention. He then began loading the revolver with five bullets while I gesture no by waving my hands back and forth like a lunatic. I knew the odds of him surviving this time were slim to none. He then raises the revolver against his head once again and begins to disturbingly smile with tears running down his face. He began mumbling the words, it was nice meeting you, James. I immediately slam my laptop shut as I hear a gunshot a split second before the laptop was fully closed. I was left baffled on my computer desk. I hadn't a clue what to do. I stupidly opened my laptop up with my eyes closed. I pressed my hand against the screen where the video chat was located. I opened my eyes, and through the cracks of my fingers, I can see blood displayed everywhere on a screen. I immediately click the exit button on the Google Chrome tab and call it a night. To this day, I'm still skeptical about what I saw that night. I haven't reported anything to the police, nor have I reported anything to Omegle. I'm not sure if that was the wisest decision, but I hope I never encounter anyone like that again.
This happened to me about a year ago. I used to be a janitor for a cleaning agency. I would basically take contract jobs to clean in various locations. One day, my cleaning agency gave me a cleaning contract at a psychiatric ward, also known as an asylum. To be honest, I was a bit hesitant to take the job, just because of the superstition of asylums being haunted, but I took it anyway because the pay was decent. Later that day, I arrived there. I see a huge old looking building. To be honest, I was quite creeped out since the asylum was secluded in the middle of nowhere. When I arrive inside, I notice people giving me an uninviting stare. I'm not just talking about the patients, I'm also talking about the employees as well. To be honest, I kept it professional and began to do my job. I remember mopping the hallway and seeing some really bizarre things. I saw some creepy looking patients that had a disturbing look to them. I don't know, they just looked like the kind of people you would see in one of those exorcist movies. I remember seeing this one guy that really gave me the chills. It was a man who looked to be about seven feet tall. He gave me this really disturbing smile like he wanted to kill me. I can see a nurse instructing him to lay on his bed. He didn't look too happy after that. I also remember seeing a swimming class taking place. Well, not exactly a swimming class, just a bunch of patients in a swimming pool. They were all holding an exercise ball and mimicking the actions of the instructor. I personally found it unsettling, to say the least. When it was around the end of my shift, I was getting ready to head home. I noticed all the patients' doors were closed, except for one room. I could see someone laying on the floor with their legs halfway across the door. It was a bit alarming for one to be laying on the floor like that. I then saw the person getting yanked into the room. That honestly startled the crap out of me. I then noticed a puddle of blood spilling out from the room and onto the hallway. I decided to approach the room and see what the hell was going on. As I peeked inside the room, I saw one of the most disturbing things ever. It was the tall man I saw earlier. He was biting the hell out of one of the nurse's neck. I could see the nurse's eyes gouged out with blood pouring everywhere. I carefully made sure to not scream or make a sound. I got the hell out of there and immediately started driving off. I even called the cops while driving. To this day, I'm still traumatized by what I saw that night. I'm not sure exactly what happened to the tall man, but he still gives me the chills just thinking about him. This is a story about a girl in my high school. I go to high school just like any normal person would, but I was having a little trouble with my grades. So I started staying after school to do a little extra work to bring my grades up. But I've noticed in school that there has been this quiet girl that attended tutoring alone with eight other people. The thing is, I would always see her staring at me, never taking her eyes off of me. I really didn't mind it, but it felt really creepy. This kept going on for about two weeks. At this point, I was feeling very uncomfortable. One day when school ended and tutoring started, I sit as far away as possible from her. We go home at around 6 p.m. And this day I got on the bus like usual. There was only one bus because there aren't so many people. And as usual, I would sit as far away as possible from her. But that day when I got off my bus stop, she got off too. This was weird as she always got off at a different bus stop, but I really didn't pay any attention to it. I thought maybe she changed her bus stop or something, I don't know. I really didn't think about it. It was getting dark and it was about a one mile walk from my bus stop to my home. But I noticed that the girl has been following me for about two minutes and I didn't know why. This of course bothered me, but there wasn't really much I could do. I just ignored her, minding my own business and I kept walking. Two minutes later, I noticed that she kept following me. 
I started to get the feeling that maybe she was lost or something. It was dark, and then she started talking to herself. She was acting really weird, and I just wanted to ignore it, but she kept whispering to herself. I could hear mumbling. The sound was getting closer and closer, so I picked up the pace. When I picked up the pace, she also did too. She then let out a scream that was so damn loud that it almost made me pee my pants. I started sprinting. She went chasing after me. I was getting scared, so I ran around the neighborhood. I didn't want her to go to my house because she would know where I live. Around the corner, I saw a bush large enough for me to hide in. Then she stopped and she thought that she lost me. When she stopped, she took a deep breath and she ran away. I stayed there for about five more minutes just to make sure. I was thinking to myself that this girl was insane and had some mental problems. After this horrifying experience, I didn't go to after school tutoring again.